Christian McCaffrey has no business being a corner as great as he is as a running back. Still talking football? Yeah. Is that football? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what if it was just not advice from an advisor? Oh, we're financial advisors. What if it was like from actual experience? Like big regrets, mistakes and stuff that we see and we realize people are obviously regretting that. What do you think? I got a good one. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of them. I mean, you see the people. I just talked to somebody the other day, and and actually, I, I told the guy, don't don't beat yourself up on that. He's got the money. He went and bought a truck, and he's like, ah, I shouldn't have bought the truck. The regret of that decision. But the guy's retired, and he can afford it, and he's in a great spot. And, and I think there's this this weird thing of of psychologically, sometimes people, you know, there's the regret, but ultimately they shouldn't regret it because they deserve it and they reward themselves yeah. with it. I regret petting the dog because I, I definitely smell the dog now. I, it's like on my hands. And yeah, yeah. I need to tell Cody to wash that dog. Um, <laughs> I think uh, one of the regrets that I've seen recently we have, here. We have a dog in the office. But we, have, we have a dog in the office. Yeah, sorry. Uh, one of the regrets I've seen is um, somebody giving too much. Yeah. Um, I actually had to call a client uh, out of Texas, one of our bigger states where we have a lot more clients is uh, in Texas, because I thought they were getting taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. We have, now we have the ability they can do uh, charitable contributions from their account so they can just send it out. And I saw him do a couple and I was like, yeah, right. I knew he wanted to do it. But then I saw more and I'm like, I wonder if I should reach out to him. Yeah. And I'd ask him, I'm like, just want to make sure this is you. And he's like, yeah, yep. You know, it's the holidays, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Cause this is more than we talked about, <laughs> you know? And, uh, so you gotta be careful. Don't give away too much. And remember that there are advantages as you age to giving money from your IRA. It's just, yeah, we may need some of that money, so we gotta be careful there. Times are good, the market's up, and you think, oh, I can give more. Yeah. Let's just let's just hold tight a little bit, you know, pace yourself. And I think one that uh, sometimes people don't realize it until it's too late, but the regret of going too conservative, and especially good times. Now, there's some people that come to mind. There's a couple of different people. One person actually, he's kind of kicking himself. He's like, man, we shouldn't have went to uh to the money market, you know, when we did. Because he's just retired. We've got some money that's going to be going out to him and kind of taking a little bit of the gains off the table for the year. That's, that's okay. Yep. But then the other side of that is, is where people go too conservative, not just to take gains off the table, but because they're like, well, I'm just kind of scared of the markets. This year is a great example. If you just jumped out of the markets or oh, concerned about things, you missed out on everything. Yep. And the news is always going to talk. The news is always going to have things. And you know, you've always said it best. It's like, you know, you take from the top. You don't take from when things are falling already. You've waited too late. You've got to take when things are really good. Yep. And so it's realizing those times and not not going too conservative, making sure that you have some for growth. The Roth accounts, why aren't those for growth? Make sure that they're growing long term because ultimately in a financial plan, I, almost every single one of them that I've seen, the Roth is the last the thing last you want to touch because you're going to get to accrue all of that compound interest tax free. I. I actually just thought of one. Uh, so if you're of retirement age, the emergencies or the surprises, they don't, uh, they don't go away. <laughs> and my best example, I have a client that wanted to sell their house and they were said maybe next year or two, they were, they, the husband and wife. And I just talked to them the other day and they said, we're not going to sell our house. And I'm like, what? What happened? This is part of the plan. Because both of their kids are getting divorced at the same time. They're not married to each other, but like, right. no, no, <laughs> I gotcha. So they just both happen to be as a boy and a girl and they're moving home. So now their plans are to kind of get it more comfortable for them. One in the basement, one upstairs. And I'm like, Hey, those surprises, they don't go away. So remember, as you get to retirement, keep in mind, those things still happen. Yeah. yeah especially if you have kids, I've seen that so many times where the unexpected things happen and the parents want to help the kids. And so it's, yeah. It may not be something in your life that's that's rapidly going to change because the plan's there and things are good. Um, but you know, ultimately, there's always the surprise, or it's just your health. I mean, health It'll is health such too. a big thing, and that kind of leads me to mine. It would be something that some people just don't really think about, and that's insurance. Even going in Medicare years, you know, you've got your just base Part A that you're going to have, you know, coming out. But then you've got you know Part B. You've got all of these other types of Medicare that you have to work in. You know, I, I'm not going to. Con- sit here and say that I'm the Medicare expert. There's some people out there that really focus on that, um, you know, and that sell it and that really focus and study that specifically. But ultimately, I do see people uh, sometimes just caught not planning properly for it because healthcare is one that consistently increases and outpaces inflation. So make sure you're accounting for that when you're going to the retirement years. 
I'm going to go with a touchy one here. This is, isn't it funny how like we kind of have like an outline of things we want to talk about, but then it always we're like, oh, I was just talking to a client yep, that said yep, that. Yep. Those are true stories. That That's not, we're not making this up. Um, but I'm going to go with the touchy one that advisors won't talk about. I'm going to go there. The fees. Yeah. I'm going to touch it because like on our side, you can see what we charge, right? It just, we're put in your best interest as your account grows. Of course, that helps us. So we want your accounts to grow. But the fees I'm going to talk about are when you look at your accounts, if you see the growth fund of America A, right? Or the international fund A, careful with those. Those are, to me, I'm really against that. I don't mind if you want to pay, a, that's a front loaded fund. If you want to pay a front loaded fee to be in a mutual fund, I'm okay with that. But where I get upset is there's a front load fee and then there's an asset under management fee like each yeah. year. I disagree with that. So the fees you got to look for, especially later in life, when we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, boy, they really add up. And I, there's just too many other options that are way less expensive. Yep. Now, now you got you to really break that down. And, and also looking, like you mentioned, the fiduciary. When you're going into the retirement years, some people just can't handle the markets and they're wanting to look for something elsewhere. And if that's you, that's you. I'm, I'm, I'm personally not a fan. I understand the markets enough to realize that Personally, for me, annuities uh, will never be in my book. Like that's something that I don't want to ever deal with and wouldn't suggest. Though, if that's you, that's you. Making sure you're not locking money up, though, even if it's a CD right this second, that potentially you will need in the near future. Because you've got to really start to strategize, especially going into retirement, because you're going to kick yourself if you get into retirement and you've locked all this money up and you can only get 10% a year and you need more than that. Because there are some really great advisors out there that may be working in your best interest, even though they're selling you a commission product, they may be actually wanting what's best for you. But there are plenty of others that may be willing to sell you something to make sure that they keep their job, that yeah. they keep the lights on at their house, because that's what they're up against in that, unfortunately. And when they do that, uh, it's just making sure that you're, you're dotting the I's and crossing the T's when it comes to these policies, because there are very few people that I've ever met that actually understand any of the annuity that, that was sold to them. Oh, they're, yeah. all, they're always confused. And I, I mean, <laughs> rightfully so, because if you have an annuity, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Go and break open all your stuff and you're going to be like, I, I don't know what the heck I have. They just use so many words that you're blurred there. I'll add one more thing to it. The, the, he mentioned CDs. Um, it's really competitive right now. There may not be a need to have a CD when you could have a money market fund that pays the same amount or even more geeky than this. If you could have a municipal money market fund that pays a little bit less, but because it's federally tax-free, you end up with a net greater amount and you can still go in and out, right? So you're not locked up in like, like a CD, but since it's so competitive between high interest savings, money market funds, CDs, municipal funds, et cetera, you have a choice to say, well, I'm going to check off boxes. This is good for me. This is good. Oh, you want me to lock my money up? Mm, this one doesn't make me do that. Okay. I'm going to go with that. And we're not talking about like paying some ridiculous fee or any fee to participate. The difference being, I can just have my money when I need the money and I don't have to be in a CD. Hasn't always been like that, actually. Yeah. 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 And I think uh, final for me is just something that people try to plan for, but they haven't really like put the, the numbers to everything. And that's like the kind of the potentially even the bucket list, or maybe it's not a bucket list. It's just, hey, when I retire and relocating. And when you relocate, whether you're downsizing or whatever the case is, it's just figuring out that plan though, because, you know, a lot of people relocating here to Florida where we're at. And, you know, sometimes if you're coming from New York, you'll get a lot cheaper of a home. And other times, if you're coming from, let's just say the middle of the US, it might be just as much, if not more for the house, plus you're going to pay more in insurance. And so it's just can catch you off guard a little bit, even though you're downsizing potentially you may still have more of an expense. Yep. And so it's just planning for that. It's not that it's wrong or right. Um, everybody has goals and we want to help you to achieve those goals, but you got to make sure it fits in your plan. Uh, my neighbor moved from New York. Uh, nice people. But uh, I was like, oh, wow. So you probably feel like you got a killer deal on the house there. And they're like, yeah, but you guys and your insurance. <laughs> yep. Shocked. I'm like, well, you know, we do have the hurricanes come through. All right. Tell me a stupid joke. Man, I don't even have coffee. I'm like, actually, I was lost when I started. Wow. I'm like, where, where do I put I my hands notice. today? So, uh, so if you have a snowball in your left hand and one in your right hand, what do you have? See, I want to go somewhere. Okay. Don't go somewhere. Okay. Yeah. If you have a snowball in your left hand and one in your right hand, what do you have? Frosty's full attention. Hey. Christmas. 
Hey, hey, there we go. That's good, man. You you actually that was a good one. All right, I like it. No, not bad. No, wait. Oh man, see, I'm thinking of this. You know, you went you went a little side on that. I did not think of it. The I'm thinking of it as like you know because you're getting ready to throw snowballs at Frosty. No. That's what my thought was, and I read this, and now I'm like, wait oh, a second, we gotta mind. go backwards. No, I was we proud of you for a moment. Back. No, that's it. No, now, 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 I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I just say? Oh, uh, no, that was good. Maybe we cut this. No, uh, no, I, no. I was talking. I was not saying it like that. That's though. good old healthy see, fun. You want me to this, ruin it? This is no. <laughs> I've already ruined it. Oh, I'm good. sitting here trying to be clean, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm throwing snowballs. Gosh, why am I so naive sometimes? Hey, man, you got one in my in the left hand and mine in the other right hand. You got my full attention, to tell you that. Might uh, even a little, put a little smile on my face, too, huh? <laughs>